Hey crazies, for 250 years, we treated gravity as if it was a force like any other. That model explained both falling on Earth and orbits in space. It seemed universal. But about a century ago, we learned that model is wrong. Gravity is actually curvature of space-time. And most of the gravity we experience on Earth is curvature in time. Yes, time can curve. This episode was made possible by generous supporters on Patreon. To be fair, I, I can understand if you're shocked or confused right now, or both. You can probably picture some kind of space curvature. That's not a huge stretch. But time curvature? What does that even mean? It's a fair question, so let's start with a simple experiment. Say we've got a tall building, like really tall. It's poking out into space. Outer, Outer space. space. We're ignoring any engineering difficulties. Just, just go with it. On the ground floor, there's a photon launcher. It sends out a photon every second. On the top floor, there's a photon timer. It receives the photons and measures the time between them. If we assume an absolute time frame for everyone and everything in the universe, which is certainly what our intuitions tell us to do, we'd expect the photon timer to receive a photon every second. But that's not what happens. The photon timer actually receives a photon every 1.000000000001 seconds. Yes, I know that's a hundredth of a nanosecond difference, but it's still a difference. That means clocks on the top floor of a building tick just a tiny bit faster than clocks on the ground floor. When two independent clocks tick at different rates, we call that time dilation. I would have called it time variation instead because it isn't actually dilating, but so be it. The point is, time passes at different rates in different places. For example, time passes more slowly the closer you are to the Earth. The Earth causes it. That's what time curvature looks like around the Earth. That's how it's perceived. Whoa. I know, right? Time dilation is real and it matters. Our GPS network would fail rather quickly if we didn't account for it. Within a day of turning it on, your location would have a seven mile error. But it gets even crazier than that. The type of time dilation involved in that building experiment is called gravitational time dilation. Not because it comes from gravity, but because it causes gravity. I know, that sounds weird, but, but hear me out. Just for a minute, forget everything you know about gravity. Imagine it doesn't exist. In that imaginary world, there's no reason for this squirrel to fall. He just floats there. That's Newton's laws at play. No unbalanced force means no acceleration. No acceleration means if he wasn't already moving, he's not gonna start now. Next, let's say there's time dilation caused by the Earth. Remember, time passes at different rates in different places. The heights of the clocks don't have to be that different though. Any difference will do. So imagine we attach two clocks to a squirrel, one on his head and one on his feet. They should tick at different rates too. The difference isn't that much. In fact, it's even smaller than it was for the building. It's only an extra four one hundredths of a femtosecond at the head for every whole second at the feet. But any difference will do, no matter how small. Unfortunately, watching clocks tick doesn't actually give us the right intuition. Let's try something a little different. If we only consider the up and down direction, that frees up the sideways direction for something else, like time, for example. This is just a space versus time graph, nothing too crazy. We've been looking at graphs like that for hundreds of years to look for patterns in motion. Except the squirrel isn't moving. Remember, we're still in that imaginary world with no force of gravity. That means we expect this squirrel to be at the same height at all times. He has no reason to fall to the ground. Or does he? Let's take everything we've learned so far and put it all together. The squirrel is hovering above the Earth in space, but it's moving forward in time. I mean, everything is moving through time. But we also know time flows at different rates in different places. You could think of it like a flow gradient around the Earth. And what happens when there's a gradient? Stuff. Gradients are the reason that anything happens, ever. All hail the, the gradients! 
the squirrel's head moves faster through time than his feet. This gradually turns his motion arrow, what we call the forward velocity. Over time, it points more and more toward the Earth. The squirrel falls to the ground simply because time dilation exists. Surprise! We just predicted gravity. This whole time, we've been imagining a universe without a force of gravity. But as long as time passes at different rates in different places, things will fall anyway. Gravity exists even if we don't treat it as a force. Why does the squirrel fall? Because there's a flow gradient in time. Why does the moon orbit the Earth? Because there's a flow gradient in time. The weird universe we've been imagining is our universe. Whoa, dude. To be clear though, it's not time itself that's flowing. Time doesn't do that, and neither does space. The flow you're seeing in this animation is just there to give you intuition. I've just replaced the ticking clocks with a bunch of imaginary point particles. So wait, what about point particles? What about them? Do they feel gravity? Sure. How do they feel that time gradient flow thingy if they don't have any size? Uh, well, because calculus. While we consider all these elementary particles to be points with no size, we don't actually know that's true. They're just smaller than we can measure. But even if they are points with no size, the math doesn't treat them that way. If we shrink the squirrel down to subatomic scales, the two clocks get closer and closer. But they're never at exactly the same place, and they're never ticking at exactly the same rate. There are always two clocks. Sometimes they're just infinitesimally close to each other. So where does gravity come from? It comes from time dilation. That's the idea that time passes at different rates in different places. Large masses like the Earth don't exert a force. They just make time pass more slowly nearby them. This creates a gradient in the flow of time, which bends space-time paths. Gravity is just time curving into space. Time is more fundamental than gravity. So, got any questions about gravity? Please ask in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Several of you asked about electron orbits in the last video. No, electrons do not orbit. An orbital is not an orbit. It's a visual representation of the probabilistic existence of quantum particles. Anyway, thanks for watching.